Right, so welcome back to another video on this channel. Today we have one that I'm really excited about, given the fact that there's not been a lot of optimism around Chelsea right now, and this one might just provide a little cause for optimism because today's video is going to be three signings that could potentially make Chelsea title contenders for the Premier League title next season. Now, first of all, before you all hound the f*** out of me, this is completely a hypothetical video, and I'm just saying it could be three signings that definitely improves us on paper if we stick with Graham Potter because the three signings I put forward do rely heavily on Grey Potter Sting because obviously they fit in with his system. And yeah, patience is a virtue, ladies and gentlemen. We do not know how we will do next season. Remember Arsenal? They finished fifth last season. They're in a title race this season and two years ago were, you know, two points above the relegation zone at some point. There's always room for optimism in football is essentially what I'm saying. So um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Three signings that will make Chelsea Premier League title contenders next season. So yeah, as you can see on your screen right now, we've got a lineup layout for how I think our squad will look next season given the, you know, players we obviously have right now and players that look like they're coming in in the summer like Christopher Nkunku who hasn't been announced by the club yet but according to Fabrizio Romano he is you know joining the club and Malo Gusto of course is joining the club in the summer as well from Lyon and we've got three spaces outlined as you can see for new signings so the first one I've gone for is a goalkeeper the second one is a number six a partner in that pivot to Enzo Fernandez and the final one is a striker up front so those are the three main positions that I think Chelsea do need to strengthen in the summer so yep like I said I'm going to put forward one goalkeeper one holding midfielder and one striker that we should sign next season that would make us title contenders and yet yeah, let's go from back to front starting with the goalkeeper okay so for the goalkeeper there was mainly two that I was between for me to be fair in um, goalkeepers that I analyzed it was first of all David Raya of Brentford who's 26 years of age competent with his hands in terms of the fact he's got a 77.3 percent save ratio in the Premier League this season and he stops 10.1 percent of his crosses as well which does mean that he's commanding when the ball comes into his box he is assured in terms of you know launching the ball forward because his launched pass completion rate which is passes longer than 40 yards He's got a percentage of 40.2% in comparison to his overall pass completion ratio of 64.2%, which isn't as impressive. But he averages 1.52 defensive actions outside the box, which does mean that he is, you know, comfortable coming outside of his box and acting as a sweeper keeper, which is very necessary in modern day football. And yep, I've said multiple times on this channel, I think the number one priority for a goalkeeper in modern day football, especially at the elite level, is to be very competent with the ball at their feet and to be essentially an 11th outfield player. And although I think David Raya would be a very good signing for us, I think that there's one man I think that would trump David Raya in terms of who I think we should sign in the summer and that is Diogo Costa the Portuguese and Porto current number one 22 years of age very good with the ball at his hands first and foremost before we go on to his you know obviously output with the ball at his feet a save percentage ratio in Liga Portuguese this season of 76.5% and he stops 7.8% of his crosses as well so he is you know commanding enough in terms of commanding his own penalty area for crosses that are put into the box and this is where he excels over David Raya in terms of his ability in possession because not only only does he have a better pass completion ratio of launched passes of 45.4% which you know obviously David Raya's is high in itself his pass completion ratio is also 15% higher than David Raya's of 79.4% which is you know obviously very high and even still he averages 1.14 defensive actions outside his penalty area per 90 which does of course mean he is also comfortable coming outside of his box and acting as that sweeper keeper so yeah I just think Diogo Costa he is the modern day Ederson and Allison. I think he's kind of the next goalkeeper of that breed of just goalkeepers who are just absolutely insane in possession and you know also is quite reliable in terms of his goalkeeping ability as well so I do think Diogo Costa is the ultimate option to go for in terms of what Chelsea want in a goalkeeper although I will say Kepa is a little bit hard done by because I do think Kepa is having an absolutely brilliant season he has the highest save percentage ratio of any goalkeeper in the Premier League with a save percentage ratio of 81.4% and also has really not put a foot wrong in terms of his distribution and the ball at his feet as well so I do think that Kepa if he does continue the way he's going might make a case for you know keeping himself in this team next season but I just have a little bit of question marks over whether he's the one to you know guide us to a Premier League title and be that goalkeeper in a title winning team so if Kepa is to prove that he's not the one for that responsibility then I think Diogo Costa would be a very good signing for Chelsea even though he will cost a little bit and maybe Raya is a you know somewhat cheaper alternative Diogo Costa is the best goalkeeper I think that we could go for in this particular system now onto the defensive midfield position another really interesting one and there was two or three really that I you know pinpointed to analyze in this video first of all it was Declan Rice Moises Kaiser Sado of Brighton and Martin Zubamendi of Real Sociedad. And look, we'll go through the one that didn't quite make it. First of all, Martin Zubamendi, 23 years of age, but has put up some very good stats in terms of his defensive output. He is, you know, very capable of winning the ball back and, you know, his off the ball responsibilities, which is obviously massive as a holding midfielder and what exactly what you want in that position. He wins 1.06 tackles per game on average. He wins 
1.01% of his interceptions per 90 as well. He averages 6.67 ball recoveries per 90 and does have a dribbler's tackled percentage ratio of 56%. And one thing that stands out massively in his game is his ability to win aerial duels with a success ratio of 68.4% and even still has a pass completion ratio of 84.6% as well which means that he is quite assured on the ball in terms of his possession of the ball as well. So yeah it was kind of between Declan Rice and Caicedo in the end given Zubamendi was quite unfortunate to miss out and probably would be a cheaper alternative to the two of those midfielders but the one I chose to go for overall was Declan Rice because at 23 years of age I think he's very assured in terms of his abilities on the ball. He has a pass completion ratio of 87.6% and averages 2.57 progressive carries per 90 as well which does mean that he is very comfortable in terms of not only passing the ball but also keeping the ball as well and that's just his on the ball abilities because of course as a six you need to be physical and need to be able to win the ball back as well which Declan Rice is very capable of which is shown in his stats as well 1.61 interceptions per 90 9.26 ball recoveries per 90 and has a success ratio of tackling dribblers of 65.4 percent and look Caicedo puts up some very good numbers as well at 20 years of age he also has a higher pass completion ratio than Declan Rice of 88.3 percent he averages more tackles one per 90 with 1.44 compared to Declan Rice's 0.91 he averages 1.53 interceptions per game 6.68 ball recoveries per game and dribblers tackle success ratio of 67.6 percent per game so some very good stats there and you know proves that Moises Caicedo is very comfortable in terms of his abilities on the ball and distributing the ball but also winning the ball back as well which is obviously crucial as a six as I said but I just think Declan Rice given his leadership abilities which are going to be very much needed at Chelsea in the next few years given Aspilicueta's on his way out Thiago Silva's getting no younger and the fact that our only other real leader you could say is Reese James given the fact that he's going to be probably the next captain and yeah we've seen Declan Rice this season he's well able to do it in the Premier League he's been West Ham's linchpin in that midfield for a number of years now and has led them on a European stage as well so he has that you know big game element in him I suppose and yeah I just think Declan Rice is one that's massively underrated by a section of the Chelsea fans I know there is a section of the Chelsea fans that do want him as well and he divides a lot of opinion in the Chelsea fan base which is massive considering he doesn't even play for Chelsea but yeah I do think he would be probably the best option for us in that holding midfield spot and I think him and Enzo would offer a lot of balance in that midfield and I think Declan Rice would not only be very competent in terms of his abilities on the ball like I said but also would be able to take a lot of the burden defensively off Enzo who is you know quite competent defensively himself as well but would be able to have more license to you know create and get on the ball and move the ball and progress the ball forward and now we move on to the striker definitely the hardest one to pick in this video and the thing with strikers is about it is that every single striker has a different profile really and it's about finding the exact profile that you need in a system which we don't really have an idea of what Graham Potter wants in a striker's profile because he hasn't really played a 4-3-3 system at any other club in his career so I've analyzed a few here I've gone for Ivan Tony, Jonathan David, Victor Ozyman and Dusan Vlahovic who were the four main strikers that I did analyze and based on those four strikers I'm just going to go with the one that I think would most suit a high possession based game which obviously is probably what Graham Potter wants to do and what the likes of City do for example and Arsenal who are two very successful possession based teams and the one that stood out like a sore thumb from those four strikers that I mentioned in terms of his capabilities in a possession based team was Jonathan David of Lille 22 years of age and has a lot of potential he had a much much higher pass completion ratio than any of the strikers I did compare him to 82.1% pass completion ratio which for a striker is absolutely brilliant he averages 3.2 shot creating actions per 90 which does show that he's very capable of you know creating four players around him in that attack he's very good in terms of his ability to dribble with the ball as well and take on his men because he has a successful take on ratio of 36.4% which as I said is very high for a striker as well he averages 26.4 carries per game which means he is very comfortable in possession as well and before all of you you know anti-stat people come out and say oh what about his goals he has got 12 goals in Ligue 1 this season he averages 0.7 goals per 90 and is you know Ligue 1's second top scorer behind Fowler and Balogun who is on loan from Arsenal at Stade de Rennes this season so yeah Jonathan David has got pretty much everything in a modern day striker that you would want especially for a possession based team and yet yeah, like I said at 22 years of age as well will probably cost a little bit of a price but I think it's worth it given how much potential this guy has got in a system that suits it which I think that Graham Potter's 4-3-3 will suit him a lot and be that kind of anchorman striker to the likes of Mudrick and Konku, Joe Felix etc whilst also having that ability to put the ball in the back of the net himself. Okay so we've picked out our three new signings Diogo Costa, Declan Rice and Jonathan David so here is what the team will look like afterwards and here's why I think this team could potentially mount a title challenge next season. So first of all we've got absolutely everything in terms of the balance of the team. Diogo Costa in goal who does offer you that ability to play the ball out of the back and be that sweeper keeper. Reese James at right back with Malo Gusto his understudy to you know very competent right wing backs if you know Reese James gets injured Malo Gusto will be able to take over the mantle from him and you know will cause Chelsea fans to be less nervous than if Aspilicueta is in the team. Then 
you've got Cucurella, who I will keep faith with because I do think there is a good footballer to this system that is in there with Cucurella if he can click. We've obviously got Ben Chilwell in reserve as well and maybe even Ian Matson if he wants to come back from his loan. We've got Benoit Badiashile and Levi Colwell who's coming back from his loan at Brighton in this system even though I wouldn't be totally against him spending another season at Brighton to you know develop his skills and perfect his craft a bit more and get a bit more experience in first team football but I think you've got two very very competent left footed centre backs there who are very tall and do have some very good technical ability as well as being obviously good defenders as well. You've got Thiago Silva as a right centre back with Wes Fafana the understudy. Then in midfield you've got a perfectly balanced midfield of Enzo Fernandez and Declan Rice like I said who will complement each other in terms of the ability to you know progress the ball forward and move the ball and keep possession but also be able to win the ball back as well. Then you've got Joe Felix in that 10 role just almost being able to have a free roam but also be able to you know help out Enzo and Rice in terms of when the you know counter attack is on against us and then you've got Mason Mount as well who I think if he does click could provide some very very strong competition to Joe Felix. Then the wing positions is one that really does excite me because I know Christopher Nkunku isn't really a natural right winger and hasn't really played right wing ever for Leipzig to be honest but I do think in this system with Jonathan David up front with Mudrick on the left who will be able to you know hug the flank really because Mudrick is very good going down the line but also being able to cut inside in his right foot as well if needed. I think Nkunku would be able to you know shift into the middle and almost create space for Reese James down that right flank to act as a right winger and I think Nkunku would be able to excel cutting in obviously on his left foot and play more centrally and operate in more central positions with his creativity and his left foot which obviously he is more naturally prone to doing and you've got Nani Madueke on that side as well who will offer you that ability to cut in on his left foot if he is needed to as well then on the left you've got Mikhailo Mudrik who is an absolutely brilliant dribbler is very fast and like I said with Nkunku tucking in centrally will give Mudrik more of a license to bomb down that left hand side with his pace and his dribbling ability and Raheem Sterling who will be quite similar as well and is able to go down the line or cut inside if needed as well and then up front you've got the man to complete it all Jonathan David to link everything together up front but also be able to put the ball into the back of the net at times as well so yeah I think this is an absolutely brilliantly balanced team and yep like I said I will say it I think this could potentially challenge for the Premier League next season if Graham Potter sorts his shit out and does get the best out with this team if he's still here this time next season so yep like I alluded to with Christopher Nkunku's positioning here's just a quick graphic as to how I think we could potentially line up in possession of the ball next season if this team does you know come to fruition so yep Christopher Nkunku obviously operating more in central areas cutting in from that right hand side which does offer Reese James space to go down that right hand side and act as a right winger like I said which then creates the elbow tactic for Cucurella to slot in at centre back and perform a back three with the likes of Badia Chile and Thiago Silva or whoever else is playing at centre back then you've got Enzo and Rice in midfield offering that stability and balance in midfield and just holding the team together essentially like glue Joe Felix who obviously will you know shift a bit more out to the left hand side given the space that will become available from Mudrick going down that left hand side and the space that's taken up on the right from Nkunku coming in as well and then like I said Jonathan David dropping deep but also being able to be that target man up front as well if you do want that focal point and or you if you want someone to link up the play which I think he is capable of doing both so yeah that would bring us to the end of this video if you did enjoy this video and want me to do more of this series leave a comment down below on what team you want me to do this with next whether it's Man United, Man City, Spurs, Arsenal, Liverpool, Newcastle or any other Premier League team for that matter and yeah leave a like on the video it would be massively appreciated it means more than you guys could ever imagine and also if you could subscribe to the channel as well that would also be hugely appreciated as well because we are looking to hit 2,000 subscribers on this channel as soon as we bloody well possibly can so every single one of you that hits that subscribe button would be an absolute legend in helping me get there as soon as possible and um, yeah I'll see you guys in my next video chat to you later